the creator is on the third planet. Vijay has data which confirms this.
saw Beatrice play. Planet populated by living machines. Unbelievable technology. Beatrice has knowledge that spans this universe. And yet, with all its pure logic, Beatrice is behind.
salvation to her house. Conviction came upon her son. You need to bow right now for your loved one. I said for you, you need to bow a thousand dollars right now. And you need to begin to pay on it. Every day, every week as God helps you. You need to do it. I'm telling you, this is God. Right now, you can break the curse off the powers of darkness. You can step out of the natural and step into the strength of God. Just like Samson. And he pulled those columns of the temple down because he stepped into God's power. There's a problem in telling this story. Do I tell it as it happened or disguise it so that it appears to unfold in a dramatic line as if moving toward some final dazzling revelation? Real life is messier than fiction and things don't fall consecutively into place. Instead, we live surrounded by all things. Like fish in water, we swim through the material and immaterial worlds, matter and thought. Sometimes it is only much later, after having passed through further times, and after having new experiences passed through our guilds, that we can go back in memory to understand the meaning of an earlier moment. Ghosts and angels are confused. Ghosts are the 
spirits of the dead, but angels are messengers of the divine. It is true that sometimes ghosts bring messages of love and sometimes leave their loved ones with a patina of calm. But a ghost is not an angel. Since ghosts retain their own personalities, they are as dear or as beautiful as they were in life. But angels are different, and no one who has seen an angel ever mistakes it for a ghost. Angels are remarkable for their warmth and their light, and all who see them speak in awe of their iridescent and refulgent light of brilliant colors, or else of the unbearable whiteness of their beauty. Dr. Proof, what's it like while you're in hibernation? Exactly like being asleep, you have absolutely no sense of time. The only difference is that you don't dream. As I understand it, you only read once a minute. Is this true? Well, that's right. I've been three times a minute, but it can reduce you down to about uh, three or three centigrade. Look, we know nothing about angels. We do not know what angels are or whether they stand in hierarchies in the skies. We know nothing of this other realm except that we are given three fleeting glimpses in our hearts. Barney was an insomniac, and Betty had frequent nightmares. Both were so persistently anxious that it became intolerable for them to continue their lives without looking into disturbing repercussions of the September night in which they could not account for two hours during the return journey from a holiday in Montreal. On the night of September 19, 1961, the Hills reported that their car was flagged down by small, gray, humanoid beings with unusual eyes. Before this, they had noticed an erratically moving light, and then a strange craft.
I want this thing to go smooth by the numbers. 
Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect oh, and Come to Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure. My steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones break of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with him. Whilst I threat to years, words to the heat of deeds to cold. Carry it not, duck, for it is a bell that summons thee to heaven or to hell.
time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this pity pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays of lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more.
Shake it up, move it on, yeah You're in a spin, you're in a spin You've got your way 
He sat back as if for the moment stopped his large eyes narrowing, then fixing on the depths of the fire. His speech commenced without the slightest warning. This is the only real evil left, he said to the flames. Yes, I answered, feeling that all-consuming subject lie near, obliterating all concerns as it always had for me. It's true, he said, shocking me, deepening my sadness, my despair. Then. God does not exist. You have no knowledge of his existence, not reason. No knowledge, I said it again, unafraid of my simplicity, my miserable human pain. None. And no vampire here has discourse with God or with the devil. No vampire that I've ever known, he said, musing, the fire dancing in his eyes. As far as I know today, after 400 years, 
I am the oldest living vampire. I stared at him, astonished. Then it began to sink in. It was as I had always feared, and it was as lonely. It was as totally without hope. This evil, this concept, it comes from disappointment, from bitterness. Don't you see? Children of Satan, children of God. Is this the only question you bring to me? Is this the only power that obsesses you, that you must make us gods and devils yourself, when the only power that exists is inside ourselves? Are you mad? I asked, astonished at my own anger, my own despair. You ask me how I could believe I would find a meaning in the supernatural? I tell you, after seeing what I have become, I could damn well believe anything. Thank you. 